next guests are the perfect duo to continue this hour, this special hour. We were just in Philadelphia with Michelle Obama. Philly is also the hometown of my next guest. Lee Daniels is an Oscar-nominated Hollywood writer, producer, director, a cultural change maker behind impressive award-winning movies like The Butler, Monsters Ball, and a critically acclaimed TV series that had us all glued every week, Empire. So when Lee first saw the play Ain't No Mo three years ago at the Public Theater here in New York, he says he made it his mission to bring it to the biggest stage in the world, Broadway. Now, Tam fam, listen closely. All right, the story centers around this idea. What if the U.S. government offered black African Americans a one-way ticket back to Africa? That is the premise of this play. This happens after the Obamas were no longer in the White House. This is how the story gets set up. The play, though, is the brainchild of Obie-winning playwright Jordan E. Cooper. So here's the deal. Jordan, at the age of 27, is making history with this show, becoming the youngest American playwright ever on Broadway. Please welcome Lee Daniels and history-making writer Jordan E. Cooper! Congratulations. So have a seat. Have a seat. Wow. I mean, you keep great company, or does he keep great company? <laughs> I love it. Congratulations. I saw the play last week, so I've been trying to process this, Lee. So I told everyone, you text me saying, you've got to come and see this play. Yes. Lee Daniels can sell water to the ocean. Hey. <laughs> hey. You know, I mean, so I never, I'm like, oh. But then I saw it. It was Hilarious, disruptive, uncomfortable, stimulating, overwhelming, yeah. uh, thought-provoking. I, I don't, they don't have enough words mm -hmm. for me to unleash yeah. what I saw. Mm -hmm. And you felt that same way. You said not since you saw Dreamgirls, yes. I believe it was as a kid, a young yep. man, yep. that you'd been shaken up like yeah. this. I stole my mom's car when I was 19 years old from Who Florida. doesn't? Who doesn't, <laughs> Lee? That doesn't surprise me. You I, would steal your mama's car. I, <laughs> and I, and I, uh, Drove to see Dream Girls at the Imperial Theater. And uh, when I saw his play, it took me right back to that moment when I saw Dream Girls. I knew that it was going to change. That's the reason, why, Dream Girls is the reason why I'm in, I yeah. do what I do. It changed my life. Right. This play has done just that for it me. It has. It changed my life. You know. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Jordan. Um, <clears throat> You were in college at the new school when you started writing this. I wrote you a card this morning. I said, I've never wanted to live in someone's mind. I'm like, can yeah. I rent just a week in your mind? <laughs> um, because I've never seen anyone, especially at this young of an age, create something so thought provoking. People will be talking about this for ages, yeah. for ages. Where were you in your beautiful mind and your journey when this started to spill out? Yeah, I was I was a junior in college, and uh, it was the summer, late summer of 2016, is when it started rapping in my head. It was when Philando Castile and Alton Sterling got murdered within like a week of each other, and I remember just being filled with grief. Um, and not knowing what to do with myself. Um, that was the day where I wish we could call in black, you know, when somebody black dies, like, I don't feel like going to work today. I can't go to class, I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> um, and I, I, I'm the type of person, I have a dark sense of humor. I'm the type of person who has to laugh at funerals, like, why is she wearing a bra and she going six feet under? Oh my God! <laughs> why, why, why is her wig crooked? Why? <laughs> Let her be free. Let her be See, free. That's what I mean by the discomfort. <laughs> because a lot of the humor is dark. And you're going, am I supposed to be laughing at this? I was looking at people in the <laughs> opening scene. I can't give too much away. Y'all gonna have to go see this. But as I totally, it reminded me of the Book of Mormons, which has gone on to win mm. all of these. This will win. This will shut down the Tonys. That's my prediction right now. Uh oh. It's gonna shut it down. <laughs> because it is so uncomfortable. It puts us in this discomfort and makes us ask, why? As I said, it's the premise of you have the first black president elected. We all are like, yes, life is going to be yeah. good. Then the reality sets yeah. in that one man, one person can't change the exactly, world. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's, that's where that first scene comes from, yeah. is this idea that we placed Obama on this pedestal that we thought 
everything was going to be right. fixed, yeah. right? We thought, we thought, oh, we live in a post-racial society. And it wasn't just black now, people you know were saying this. There were a lot of, I was at MSNBC, every liberal white person Everybody I walked by, they were like, we're post-racial. Yeah. I'm like, for right. you, maybe. Right. Meanwhile, meanwhile, on inauguration day, we were scared he was going to get shot. F yes. Uh, we yeah. were scared. We were like, oh, my God, don't let him get shot. Don't let him get shot. Don't let Because we've been trained that whenever we have somebody in a position of power, they're taken away. Yeah. Immediately. And so... We were, we were in a, in a moment of joy once we realized he was there. And I think what happened was we realized that we, we, we were no better than we were before. Black Lives Matter was founded under Obama's presidency. Right, right. You know and what I mean? And that's why I said this is a perfect pair. When we come back more with Lee and Jordan and the play, I promise you, if you see it, you won't sleep for days because you'll be thinking <laughs> about what you saw like me. Stay with us. Welcome back. Still with me, Oscar-nominated writer, producer, director Lee Daniels, and playwright and actor Jordan E. Cooper talking about their amazing play, Ain't No More, the hottest ticket, by the way, on Broadway. Lee, I was so struck when we were talking to Mrs. Obama about the light we carry, and I know that you didn't have a lot of black gay mentors when you mm -hmm. started out, and even, I'm sure, as you were ascending to the greatest level that you are now, so it was important for you. Yeah. to be there for Jordan and not only be the cheerleader, but to help him just blossom on Broadway because all of the things you've accomplished, this is a first for you too with Broadway. Yeah, there were no mentors for me. I didn't know that there were even black directors yeah. as a kid. I don't think that there were black directors. I don't know. I, I didn't see any, especially gay black directors. Yeah. That was out of yeah. the question. Yeah. So when I saw Jordan's work, as, you know, as I did when we were discovering, you know, the the writer of Precious, uh, you have to pass it on. It's not your gift. Is that the light you carry? Yes, yeah, the light I carry. You have to pass it on. It's not just about you. Yeah. And so when I saw Jordan, there was no way that I couldn't embrace him and push him forward because there are only a few of us. Yeah. But there, yet there are many of us. Yeah. You know but I mean? the thing is also is that when he as a mentor does that, it teaches me how to pass on that light. Wow. It teaches me how to keep the ladder going. It's not mine to keep on to, because yeah. it wasn't his to keep on to. But that's to. exactly you know what, what I mean? uh, Mrs. Obama says in the book, the light that you carry, and, and it's, we, we have a mentor in common? Yes, we do, Ooh. we do. Miss Ernestine Rose is, she, she was a part of my DVA workshop. She was an uh, okay. acting teacher and a writing teacher and a mentor for me. Okay, so outside of my, outside of my parents, this is the most influential person in my life. Really? I did not know this until yes, now. Yes. And I don't like surprises. What is happening? Fort Worth, Texas. So Hi, she sent Cameron you a message. and Jordan. I am so proud of you both for everything oh. that you've accomplished. It's been a privilege and an honor to help you both oh, shine gosh. your lights brightly out into the world. I love being your teacher. I just want to give you a big hug. Get ready, because I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> You can't make this up. Hi. You want to be my mentor, too? <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, my God. Hi. Come sit. Are you Thank kidding you. me? Yes. yes. Right here. Yeah. Okay, I, I am speechless right now because... <laughs> are we still on air? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I planned to, after I saw the play, I was going to write her. I've been begging you to come to the city. You haven't had a chance to come. She relocated, moved. So Miss Rose... I was in the ninth grade, Poly High School, Fort Worth, Texas. People were like, do not take Miss Rose's class. She's gonna fail you. She's the <laughs> toughest teacher in the world, da 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 And I'm like, uh, somehow I got in her class. Most, thank you for everything. You introduced you. me to Intoshaki Shange. You introduced me to life. You, Shep, you are the reason with my parents that I'm here. <laughs> and that fact that you mentored, I did, did you know that? Yes. She, she is so proud of you. I, well, so proud of you. you. I can't believe you did this to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. you, you've known me since I was 16. Yeah. yeah. Walked in that classroom. It's the element of surprise. You always have to have the element of surprise. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Don't let them know the ending. Right. Don't let them... Listen, could you have predicted this ending? 
I could not. I this could not. Was cra this is a this is a, a, a mind meld. Lee, right this here. is an Empire <laughs> episode. Wow, this is, an empire. <laughs> this is an Empire episode for sure. Wow. <laughs> Wow, everybody needs you. Yeah, thank you. Everybody thank needs you. someone like you. Cameron, four years in high school, theater arts, English, road trips, UIL competition. This was Best Actress, UIL, her first year out. Wow. Wait, let me ask you something. Do they have anything in common? Do they have anything in common? Uh, they do. Creativity, drive, genius. I could give them a role, give them a monologue, and they just slay. They wow. just slay on their own. All they right. know how to do the work. So Tamara's an actress, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. No. So you, we got a closet my, actress over my, here? My monologue was Toussaint Louverture. Ooh. Uh, Toussaint. Yes, uh, from Colored Girls, who considered suicide when the rain was enough. Miss Rose gave me my first copy. Uh, I am so blown away. I cannot believe you are here. I am here. And New York, New York. We talk, we text, and I just, I, I'm, I am not normally speechless, but this is a live show. <laughs> um, when I tell you this is the power of believing, Michelle Obama said, believe in children and you pass it to them. Yeah. That is exactly what you did for us. Yeah. And Lee, yeah. um, you know, I, I love Lee so much because, you know, people talk the talk, you walk the walk. Every door that Lee Daniels has opened, mm -hmm. he makes sure that someone that looks like us <laughs> that represents our communities and that doesn't mean leaving other people out but when you grow up to be an oscar nominated actor director and, and you say i didn't know anyone existed like me kids will look at you forever and say lee daniels did it i can do it so thank you lee i gotta get myself together or i cry these eyelashes off miss rose i love you shout out polly high school the underdogs do win Ain't no more, it's currently in previews.